Hmm. Hi everybody, I'm Christian. Welcome to uh, Lazy Devs. Welcome to our Pico Hero tutorial. Um, Pico Hero? Yeah, Pico 8 Hero. Um, we are doing a roguelike. And things are going doing uh, going well. We kind of like, oh, there's a bit of an issue there. Always when I say things are going well, things are not going well. Uh, I want to fix this this part here, that looks weird. Uh, and also uh, we kind of uh, can fix this, this is fine now. So generally like we added, uh, we're starting to add some visual decorations to kind of like, um, to make our, our dungeons, our, our beautiful, um, our environment look, look more homey. And so far this is good, like this is, like if this was like a dungeon in our, uh, a room in our dungeon, that would be fine, that's like it's, 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 no, it's, it's, uh, we have, it looks at least like a dungeon now that we have like, we brought back to like this, this brick texture. Um, I would probably like, if I was to like continue working on this game, I have like these very wormy outlines here. I would probably uh, make them less wormy, more and more bricky. Uh, but so far, like this is like really just to exemplify, you know, the, uh, the tile functions we did. Oh, look, there's another door that has not been created. Uh, I, I think I know why. Yeah, so the problem why the, the why the door was not created is, yeah, uh, we are creating the doors after we uh, make the tile decorations. And um, I think the it basically says like, oh, there is no, there is no floor tile in there anymore. So I guess we, I cannot install the door in here. Uh, so let me fix this real quick here. Yeah, here we're going to go M get. Mm, and it's like, oh, I guess that's not a door then. How do we do this? And um, we cannot make it walkable because if we make this walkable, then if we check for walkable, then it might overwrite a, um, a stairs. So, I mean, it's a bit of a mess, but something like this. At this point, we, may, we might actually go for the, for the tile. Yeah, let's go. A again, I'm gonna check if, if this actually saves tokens. Five, three, four, nine. This is this is. I, that that's that's the thing I want to waste time time on. Um, it's if it's four. So if it's four, I still want to override it. Um, all right. So let's see if this works. Were local dx uh, dy equals d dot x d dot y, and then I want to remove replace this. Come on, come on. Come on, it's still one token more. What? <laughs> it's crazy. But this costs a token. Well, can't argue with numbers. Okay, good. So this should should get our doors installed more frequently now. The problem is like it, the the new tile, this this new fake wall tile was kind of like preventing wharf, um, uh, doors from uh, appearing. There's a bit of an issue here now that uh, the after the door is opened, now the the tile is kind of like um, it's it's it looks odd, like the the wall is missing. So you might actually, uh, if you wanted to really add like this little little detail here, you might create like a special tile that kind of shows maybe like an open door or something, or make sure that the door knows if it's you know in the right space or not. It's it's fine. It's gonna be fine. It's fine. Alrighty, mighty. Now, the next thing I want to be working on is more decoration because this looks empty. This is a, a very nice looking medieval kind of like RPG kind of room, but it's it's a bit empty. So it would be nice if we brought some decorations, like some new items to kind of like put into our dungeon. I think that would be really nice if there's like some stuff in our dungeon. And this is kind of like opportunity where like, I'm not, I'm not gonna do this for too long because this is kind of like really up to you. It's kind of like creativity and you, know, you have to figure out what you want to populate your room with. We already have uh, or your dungeons with, we already have some things, right? So for example, we have like, um, we could put pots in here. That would be great. Mm -hmm. Something like this, right? A bunch of pots, that's, that's, that's nice, but 
it, it brought more life into this, so we, we might actually uh, already think about the, doing a decoration function that puts pots in our rooms. That's that's already something that we might do. But while we're at it, it would be nice to also think about other kinds of types of decorations. Maybe not always like gameplay related decorations, maybe just like, you know, more variation in, in the floor tiles, for example. I prepared something, like always I do. Import t02.png. Okay, do you want to see? Um, so in the first page, not, not much, has, much has changed. I added like a gray, gray um, staircase here. And that, that is just basically like maybe, I used it once in a version here where I had like the, in, in, this, in this hub world, I had like a second staircase basically. And that was like the daily challenge staircase. But I removed that feature eventually because it was wasting a lot of tokens. Um, we might bring it back. Uh, the idea was that it is a um, staircase that is kind of like um, unavailable anymore. I just put it in here because I had some space in here. We can like put something else in there. It's fine. But here on the second tab, things are changing. Ooh, look at this. First of all, you might, you, I might have been drawn to this beautiful Kiyobasa. and that's something that I decided, like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna splurge a little bit, you know. Um, generally, that's something I really like. Um, being like, um, um, how would you say it? It's, it's about. Sometimes you want to like, you know invest a lot of effort into something that is going to be seen just once because that makes it special and in this case you know when somebody finishes this game uh, they want to feel like they achieved like something really cool and a cool way of doing this is, like showing them like like investing a lot of effort a lot of tiles into like this one thing that they will see at the end this makes the kielbasa seem like really incredible and like oh my gosh a kielbasa oh my gosh it's so huge you know <laughs> that's what she said <laughs> Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, we're gonna have to make this room a lot bigger now that we have the kielbasa. Um, but um, but yeah. So 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 something like this, right? And and you know, even the upper tiles are kind of like useless. But you know, that kind of like makes this room like really epic. And 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 uh, achieving this, like uh, getting all the way up here, makes it like really special and, and incredible. And might, we might make it even bigger yet, but you know, just like as an idea of, of, of how the ending of this game will play out, you will see like this kielbasa at the end, <gasps> you know. Um, we have to also now change a little bit the, um, let's just, let's do it right now before we forget it. So this is going to be tile 110. So this is the tile that you have to interact with now to finish this game. Uh, let's go gameplay. Um, you can go like else if 110 Kielbasa. and we're just gonna set the wind to true just like this it doesn't matter where we find it like so um, just want to make sure that yeah all of these are interactable technically but I, I guess we just want to set one of these to like the, the middle section. And yeah, we can make the entire kibasa so interactable, it's fine. Uh, it's just like it costs more tokens to check for all of these other remaining ones. But let's get to the other decorations I have. There's some, some more stuff. This is really cool. Uh, this is something I saw also in, in Midnight Dungeon that I kind of like uh, uh, was inspired by. Um, so it's kind of like a kind of like a floor tile that it looks a bit like like um, like some kind of um, carpet or something. Uh, I'm not sure what what exactly this is, but I kind of like it. Uh, let's make this um, a bit closer. I want to like replicate exactly the look of my prototype because I thought it was it looked cool. Okay, something like this. Um, so yeah, again, you, uh, kind of like a carpet kind of thing. And in order to make it go all the way up to the wall, you, we have like this special type of um, um, of this wall fixing tile. Uh, probably not going to use it in um, procedural generation. It's just something that we can do use for uh, for the manually created levels. But there's then there's more stuff. Like I have these torches here, and they were also from Midnight Dungeon. And the idea is, and that's something we have to in introduce now, is that those torches should animate. And we don't really have function to do that yet. So we have to kind of make sure that these torches are kind of flipping back, flipping back and forth. 
So that's that's something that we need for, uh, still. And then I have something like this. That this is kind of like grass or like just like general like tiles that that add a lot of like floor variations. Like nothing really special. Just like adding more uh, substance to the floors. Maybe there will be sent sometimes rooms that are just full of like debris that do nothing. Like these are just debris basically. They do nothing. But also wanted to, and that's kind of like maybe controversial, but I wanted to also add these kind of things. Um, these are kind of like um, plants or farms, and the idea is that they will actually block, block line of sight. At least those two big ones are gonna block line of sight. So I'm gonna go uh, to the draw function here. I'm not sure if draw or update is a good one. Um, and I'm gonna put in a function called animap. And this function basically gets called every frame we draw something. Not every frame in general, but just every frame we draw something. So um, like here, before we draw the map, but after this fade perk uh, thing. And in, in Animap, we're just gonna like go through the entire map. Like there's no good way of doing this. We're just gonna go four x equals zero fifteen do. We're just gonna go through the entire map and look for uh, tiles that need to be animated. And there's not too many just yet. Later on, maybe if you get like a lot of tiles, then you can think about maybe um, 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 like uh, like doing some kind of like maybe uh, area situation here, but we're just gonna use a, a very dumb, um, very dumb like if statement here. There's just like those two torches that we are making. So we're gonna go if TLE equals, so this is gonna be the left torch. So this torch, um, wait, how does that work? Yeah. Uh, wait, so mm, so the problem is they have to switch back and forth, right? So if, if um, the left torches, um, so for the left torches, we're going to add one to it. And for the right torches, we resubtract one of it. And that's why it will flick back, back and forth. So 64 and 66 is what we're checking for. 64 or TLE equals 66. Mm, be like TLE equals TLE plus one or plus equals one. And then else if and that's gonna be the the second and a second frame of the animation so it's 65 and 67 maybe there's a more efficient solution for this i don't know you let me know you guys figured out something it's uh, i relied on this one and it's it's not you know i'm not sure if we can save too much here oh yeah but of course you have to also be like um m set uh x y dot tl like so. And technically we are modifying a lot of tiles in this way, but it's kind of, kind of, uh, there's some uh, end problem here. Uh, the only problem here now is like, if you run this, it's gonna be looking really awkward. Uh, yeah, there we, there we had some other problem here. For do. I, I messed up something. Oh, else if. Uh, yeah, they're flickering now very fast. So we kind of have to make sure that it happens just every now and then. Um, I'm not sure what's the best way of doing this. Is I eventually settled like for a very awkward solution, but that might be might be you know that might be just par for the course. Um, I basically said like um, here at the start of the game we're gonna go tiny, like tile animation, and we set it to zero. And we, here we're gonna go tiny plus equals one, and if tiny smaller than 15, return, and then otherwise continue. Something like this. Um, the reason why I've used like a spe specific variable and not like the um, solution with the, um, um, what is it called, the modulo, is I. it was difficult to, because the, the problem is like you want to execute this once during an animation. And I would have the situations where the modulo sometimes would, because 
we cannot control how often the disk gets called. Sometimes it would skip a thing, and it's, it was just messy. I just decided to, to use like this this one um, one little frame. So now you can see like there is there is an animation happening. That's really cute. So it would be great if those torches will appear in our level. That would be that would be something, wouldn't it? Let's try to do that. Okay, so we're gonna go to the, our gen um, tab, and here we're gonna add a new function, obviously. Ooh, what happened? Yes, it's me, it's Christian from the future. After editing this episode, I realized Christian from the past, as much as I love him because I was once him, he was struggling a little bit explaining exactly how this function works. So I decided to travel through time and space to uh, help Christian from the past out a little bit. So we are going to make a function now that is going to decorate rooms. We are going to go through all of the rooms one by one that we have. We have a rooms array and we're gonna have some kind of function that will put stuff in our rooms. We'll just like shuffle around some, some, uh, some tiles. Um, now this is gonna be a bit complicated because down the line we want to maybe have like different themes for individual rooms. So for example, one room could be, you know, a room with a lot of farms and plants in it. Another room would be like a dining room where it's like a nice carpet and torches at the sides. You know, there's each room will have maybe its individual approach. One room will be a, a warehouse with a lot of um, um, vases. So we kind of have to figure out some kind of system to make that work. But we, before we go to this very far, far step, let us just start first making a room that fills a room, uh, making a function that fills a room with a carpet. Let's try to do that. Um, now, where are we going to do this? I decided that um, we're going to um, launch this function at the very end, once all the mobs and all the everything uh, has been installed. Quick note here, this function is really just decoration. Um, it will have gameplay um, uh, consequences, obviously, but this is not going to be the function that um, is responsible for upsetting chests in our rooms. I think my idea is that this would be a different process, although there might be an argument for combining the two, the two functions to one later on. Anyways, um, we're going to call this function. Now I have to be really careful because this is already recorded that I re re recreate the function exactly the way it was. I initially coded it when I when I initially recorded this part. So I will be doing like a lot of checking back and forth that I coded things exactly the same. I'm sorry about that in advance. I hate that. Um, we're going to call this deco rooms. Decorate rooms, basically. And I'm going to grab this and I'm going to go all the way downstairs to our beloved ending of our generation, uh, gen function, gen tab. And we're going to go function deco rooms. Okay. Now, as I said, we're gonna loop through all of the rooms for all in all room. Last recording, I spent like half an hour trying to find the, the S as a, as a problem. Mm. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm falling apart at the seams, as you can tell. Um, <laughs> that's me falling apart at the seams. Okay, so we're going through all of the rooms. Now it makes sense like to loop through all of the tiles in the room to kind of set them as again. You want to, to put like this, this uh, I call it the, it could be a grating as well. It might not be a carpet, it just could be a grating. I want to put that crate, a grate, crate, grate, the, the mesh wire, the, let's call it carpet. I want to put that in, in the room. I'm just going to fill the room with carpet and then I'm going to tweak it a little bit. Okay, so we're going to go 4x equals zero to r dot width to room width and you have to be careful here because we start at zero we have to do minus one at the end it's, that's how it works somebody said no it's becoming harder and harder to just get a bunch of minutes in my day to just like quarters like people trying to sell me something anyway no uh, no excuse anymore for x um we get this end and I had to want to end too, too much because I need another for loop. See, that's the problem. That's the kind of thing that really deteriorates the quality of my recordings when I get constantly interrupted. Oh, oh, this is me getting angry. <laughs> okay, so we're looping through this stuff. Everything is perfect. Um, now we kind of want to maybe change, man manipulate the tiles of the individual rooms, right? So we're going to do something like mset 
Uh, now we kind of have to find out where the room begins at r.x. That's the top left corner of our room plus x. And then the same thing for y. And now this time around, I'm really watching for this the y x problem because that comes up a lot. Was causing some troubles in the past. Okay, we're gonna set this to 68. We're gonna exchange all of the tiles in the room with this floor tile. And that's basically it. This is how you decorate a room. It's a very bad decoration though, and we have to go, gonna have to fix it later on. But let's run this. So now all of the rooms are filled like with this mon monotonous um, tile. We have to be honest with ourselves. This is not good. <laughs> this is not good. <laughs> So, uh, what we might do here is, for example, let me see real quick. Yeah, we want to want to maybe check. We want to don't want the, the carpet to go all the way to all the edges of the room. We want to leave the edges the way they are. Okay. So we're gonna do something like let's make the left edge first. So if x uh, equ uh, is greater than zero, then just like do something like this. First the left edge. You know, just I want to like build it step up step by step. And at least the left edge of the room blank. This is exactly what you want. And then we're gonna go to the top edge. Top edge is blank, that's really great. Now, the problem that we had previously also, the carpet over like destroyed the this, like, one tile that was over, that's over, overlapped by the player. So now this looks like we brought this one back, so this is good. And so now let's do it with the right and bottom edge. Now these are a bit more tricky. Um, because you have to be like um, r dot w here, right? And y is smaller than r dot height. Um, not sure if this will work. We might have to do a minus one there, right? Yeah, we'd have to do a minus one here. Ooh, that doesn't feel so good. Uh, but yeah, a lot of tokens for this. But yeah. All right, so now we brought in the, the carpet. Now this kind of really looks nice. Like when these rooms pop, pop up every now and then, this would be great. This would be really great because there's like, oh, it's like more variation. Of course, you, we don't, don't want every room to be like this. So we want to bring like now different types of rooms. And here we encounter a bit of an issue. Let's, for the sake of argument, Let's say we want to have like a different type of room that is all about um, that is all about like debris. We're gonna put debris in this room, and we have like these debris tiles, like this destroyed room, right? So we have like these tiles. We're gonna like populate the room with these tiles. Cool, perfect, love it so much. Um, so we would have to basically uh, so maybe something like we would create a function, maybe. So it's like. Um, we're gonna call this function deco carpet, right? Deco carpet, and we're gonna copy all of this, Ooh. and then right, and then we're gonna put an R into here, and we're gonna go deco carpet when we look through all the rooms. So now it's like the decoration of the room, this this room style, has been turned into a function. So now when we generate it, oh, no, we have to watch out here. Something is wrong. Ah, what is wrong? We have to put R here. That's good. Okay, so now this works. Now it's like it's its own function, and now we can create like a different function that kind of does the same. And you already see like, oh, there's another for x loop. Oh, that I, I don't I don't feel so good, Mister Mister Mister. Mr. Uh, token limit, <laughs> and then we could like put like random uh, random tiles in here, and uh, this won't be de deco carpet. This will be called deco uh, dirt. Let's call it a dirt room, and let's let's just fill it with one dirt tile. Let's, let's fill it with seventy five. We're gonna change this later. On. I'm just gonna fill it with seventy five. Something along those lines. And then it's like, um, yeah, and then it's going to be something like if R&D uh, uh, is smaller than 0 0.5, then else if, uh, or else, and, and then else, we're going to do the dirt. But 
this is this is fine. This is not bad. This is fine," says he as he drinks his tea and and uh, the room is burning down. But there is something I'm worried about, and that is we're gonna have maybe like um, I think the uh, the amount of functions I planned is I don't have it here. I think around five different types of function, and every time we're gonna go basically begin with the same thing where we go through all of the tiles in that room. And that just don't, doesn't feel so good. Um, so it would be great, perhaps. Fabulous. If we could maybe um, somehow this part where we go dif um, through this loop, this part, the the, the two four, four, four next loops, if they were part of the deco rooms function somehow. So only this middle part where we actually manipulate the individual tiles, only this part is going to be the individual functions that do something with the room. This is my strategy. So we're going to kind of make like a kind of, like, I call it that like a plug-in system. It's not really a plug-in system, but the idea is that we're going to have a loop and inside this loop, um, we're going to call to the different functions and not like putting the whole loop in each one of those functions. And also another thing that I'm worried about, like this um, multiple if statements, that's also bad. Um, because we kind of like, whenever we add a new function, we're gonna, we're gonna have to add a new if statement. So maybe there's some kind of like a more um, uh, elegant way of solving this. Maybe, let's try. Although now that I think of it, maybe, maybe that's actually not the token efficient solution. Let's try this. Okay, so first let me try the, <clears throat> let me try getting this guy out. So we're gonna get. Oh no! Sorry, little uh, little problemaru here, man. Oh, oh man, this is this is. Mm. Okay, so uh, we're putting this loop in here, and this is a cursed episode, I tell you. Um, right. So we're so we're looping through all of the tiles of a given room, and then inside we're gonna call. Let's say let's try to call it deco carpet. Just just like deco carpet first, and you'll see that like there's a bit of an issue here where we cannot truly just like call the carpet, we have to also tell the carpet at which, the carpet function, which tile we are currently dealing with. So uh, we can have to send a bunch of, um, a bunch of uh, um, arguments inside the, the, our decoration function, sub functions inside our plug-in, little plug-in thing. Uh, so let's say, uh, so we want to have the individual tile, the actual global tile coordinate. And also it would be nice to, to pass on the X and Y of the individual loop. Because here, um, here we're checking like if we are at the edge of the room. So those functions might want to know if we are, you know, how far along the, roof, um, the loop we are. And so here we're gonna go R dot x plus x r dot y plus y x y and then here we can just go like this and like this is what i'm thinking oops i something i, I missed miss there we go so let's see if, if that works okay so this works. And now, what if I want? Let's let's real quick rewrite this dirt function uh, to work the same way. That doesn't take too much. And you can see, like for the dirt function, this will be a very simple. You're just gonna go something like tx toy. Obviously, this is not a very good dirt function. I'm gonna rewrite it later on. But you can see that. Oh, it's actually not working. Um, let's plug this in real quick. Cool. We might actually uh, might one. We might actually start looping the y at one, because we know we're probably never going to manipulate the top row. Mm. Let's do it for now, and then if we need it, then we can later later find it out. Uh, so let's let's go like this, because the top row, as we said, is always like this, um, this uh, this little wall that we can overlap. Cool. But now again, how do we do this? That um, how we solve the problem that the individual uh, functions are being called depending on random number generator. Now we cannot do like if um, R and D is smaller than zero point five, then decoder it else. 
you know, you don't want to be doing like deco dirt now because, especially now, because we uh, so much, um, there's so much arguments in this, in this. So, oh, that would be look weird. And also it will have the problem. We kind of have to decide before we loop, start the loop, because now we're going to have a carpets and dirt alternating. <laughs> That's not what we want. <laughs> So you have like these kind of like chimera types of rooms. So that's not a good solution. Here's the solution that I um, I came up with. We're going to use a similar function that we used at the very beginning of this um, entire tutorial. At the very beginning, we we're talking about this weird thing in Pico 8 where we can save a function inside a variable. So something like um, at the beginning, we can something go for something like a local func uh, equals and then it's going to be either decode let's say decode dirt right and then here inside we're just going to call this function and you can see that that kind of like calls the entire function so we don't have to touch this this loop anymore we just have to make sure that in, depending on an if statement maybe something like if r and d let's go let's go leco func at the top and then r and d uh, is smaller than 0 0.5, then uh, func equals deco dirt, else and and that's going to be carpet. So this is a cool solution for this problem, and that that will be fine. If you can keep this, if you want to keep this around, that's fine. Now we kind of have like this um, set selecting different function depending on um, the random number generator. But if you look at this, there is actually an even better solution, I think. Uh, something that that's um, because like I don't like the way the random number generator comes because this like if smaller zero, zero five, then you have to if there's like a third function, it will be getting really awkward um, because then you no longer do the um, randomizer here, but you have to create a whole new function, a whole new variable for that, and it's going to get very confusing. We already have tools in our program to solve these kinds of problems, and we're going to do something that is a bit crazy. Uh, we're going to call, we're going to create an array. And that array will contain functions. Functions. We're gonna put dirt and carpet in this array. And what we then do now is just like func equals get rind uh, funks. We're getting a random entry from this array and putting it in our in our func variable. That's really clean and nice, and we can easily expand it with as many functions as we want without having to touch any kind of random numbers and tweaking random numbers. It just takes an entry from this array. <sighs> okay, so let's try it. Let's, let's see if this works. See, it works. Easy. Now, now that we have like the system in place, let us start um, making those functions a bit more sophisticated. First of all, the decode dirt function. It's um, how do we make it so? Because right now we're filling with the same tile. How do we make it so that it fills our room with like with randomly sorted tiles? It's supposed to be just a chaotic room full of random tiles. Well, something we can do is something like uh, we're going to create a. Uh, we're going to create um, another array and we're going to just fill that array with random tiles that, that belong in this type of room. And then we're going to use again this get rind function to just get a random tile from that array. So sometimes it's going to be like a normal um, floor tile. Sometimes it's going to be 74, 75 or 76. So sometimes we're going to get, get like really nice clean floors. But sometimes you're going to get this tile, this tile, or this tile. Kind of like we'll loop through those tiles. And then in here, it's going to go get, get rind tar. Hmm. There's one there, but you don't see that anymore. See, it looks like a nice little room uh, full of debris. <laughs> right now, the random number generator really prefers the the carpet rooms but yeah you see now like these random debris rooms cool 
Um, there is a bit of an issue here, and that's something we're not going to address in this episode, but maybe some, in some time in a future episode. It's kind of bad that we're doing the explode val here in this function, because this function is called every single tile. So every single tile, we're exploding this string into an array, which could bog down our, our procedural generation. But I'm not going to lose any sleep over. As you can see, it's pretty instantaneous. It takes maybe a second. So it doesn't feel like, especially if, you, if it uh, fades out and you can see the black screen for a second, you will be fine with that. Um, but maybe later down the line, it might be worthwhile to get this out and put it maybe in, in a decorums function here. I want to keep all of these things around here because this is the function that you'll be working, thinking around when you are um, creating the decoration function. So I want to keep those um, arrays in here rather than here. Um, so maybe I would put them in deco rooms and then address them from the individual decoration functions. Cool. Um, something I would do here, perhaps, is I don't know. I don't know if it's necessary, but I just want to make sure that if we're putting dirt on something, that it is um, an empty tile. Actually, this might be something that we will do uh, here. And this is so like the decorations do not overwrite. Well, wait, I cannot do it. Wait a minute. I cannot do it because <laughs> I already recorded the next episode. Okay. So at the beginning of a, of a future episode, we will, we will change this. Uh, this is hilarious. I love it. Uh, um, so if the tile is a normal empty floor tile, uh, only then we're gonna replace it with a random dirt tile. It's not it won't change too much, but it just like gives us the peace of mind that if there is some important tile in this room already, for example, because uh, previously we placed a chest in there, we will just skip that tile and move over to the next tile. Just making sure that when replacing tile, we're not overwriting anything important that was already in that room before. Ah, oh, can you believe it? Is this isn't this the best? How weird like this? How, why is that even a door? This is fascinating. Why is this a door? Also, why are those enemies there? They're outside. Do you see them? They're not in a room. I feel like something went wrong with procedurally generating this, this thing. Do you see any other problems like this? Well, obviously, once I pr I think I press multiple times. That's why. Cool. Now, the next thing I want to be doing is I want to introduce a new function. So I we initially started here that we want to have like the torches on the on the edges. So let's do the torches. Let's do a torch room or a room that has torches on the walls. I'm just gonna copy the this, this part here. Oops, not cut. Do not cut. Uh, I want to make sure that the, the functions appear in the same order that they appear later on in the file. So I'm going to put, put this deco torch in here. I want to add this to, um, to this list. Okay, so how are we placing the torches? In some extent, uh, to some extent, this is going to be a very similar approach than it was we had with the carpet, where we want the torches just to appear on the sides. We don't want to, them to appear uh, in the middle of the room, obviously. So we're going to go with something like uh, if x equals zero, then m set tx ty, and it's going to be the torch as 64. This guy. And then else if um, x equals um, the width of the room minus one, then m set tx ty 66. That's going to be this torch. Let's see how this looks. So there's a bit of a problem. Oh, even double equals. Uh, 
and you see hmm hmm that's that's bad mojo that's ah that doesn't look so good now like we just line the walls with torches let's not do that so let's do something like if uh, let's do it like every second row so it's gonna go like we're gonna do something like if a y a modulo I haven't wrote module in a long time. There we go. <laughs> Two equals one then. And this looks a lot better. See now like we get like this really neat uh, torched room. But here you can see on the very right side, you can see another problem that comes up now. Sometimes the torch is placed at a door. And we don't want that. We don't want torches to be appearing on doors because something even more stupid happens. When I open this door, now we have like this floating torch. That's not good. It's bad even, you could say. <laughs> so how are we going to deal with this problem? Well, we're gonna have to invent a new function. That function will be about finding out if there is a tile next to this tile. Next to tile. Let's go x, y, tile. It will basically loop through all the neighboring tiles uh, and look for that tile. And if it found uh, that tile, it will immediately return, okay, yeah, we are next to that tile. If not, uh, it will uh, continue until we're done and then we're gonna return false. We are not next to this time. Um, so if, we're gonna have to check if, if we're in bounds just, uh, in case we're checking um, for a tile that is at the edge of the screen. So it's gonna be like, um, I just realized I cannot actually deviate from, <laughs> I said it was underscore in my original, I'm sorry. Uh, plus dear x, uh, I, it's so weird. I cannot actually come. <laughs> I'm a prisoner of time. I cannot change the timeline. <laughs> we'll be both extinct. Um, yeah, and then if that's and And we check if this is oh somebody oh somebody just support me on coffee marty thank you so much for your support on coffee marty i'm really glad <laughs> it's almost as if it was for the live stream <laughs> uh m get no i really appreciate the support on coffee guys it's um it's, it's really cool you don't have to though um okay so we're getting the tile and if that's tile is the tile that we're looking for then all right and return true. like so and so we can use this function now in our torch function to check if we are next to a door now this is a bit of a stupid situation because we're looking for a negative so we never will be actually seeing if this worked or not we just like hoped it, it works um this is going to be uh, tile number 13. so we are ne if next to tile Um, if you're not next to that, to that tile, if you're not next to a door, then we're gonna place the torch. And if you're next to a door, there's a bit of an issue here. There's a then missing, uh, yeah. Then. <laughs> okay. <sighs> well, again, we're not gonna, never gonna see a, um, like this thing working. Now, just to, um, because this infuriates me. Let us remove the 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 let us remove the mobs for now. I just want to have like a mesh the Y button for a while to just kind of like see what happens. So you see the top right room. There should be a torch there, but there is no torch now. So we know that these torch are torches were not placed because there is a door. I'm talking about this place here, here, where I'm standing now. This there should be a torch according to our thing, but there is no now. So it's it's working, I think it's working. Okay, there is one last thing I want to do about the torch, and that is 
Well, there's two things I want to do. Uh, I want to. I don't want to always have a torch. Sometimes, because right now we have like this very predictable pattern. Sometimes, I want to like. Every, one of three torches won't be just placed. Will be completely skipped. And that's kind of like just like little little detail to add more variety to to our torches. So you see now there is a torch missing there, uh, and that kind of like uh, creates more interest. Cool. cool. Here is something that we can do now. The carpet rooms. They kind of look a bit empty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in the deco torch inside a deco carpet. So sometimes we're gonna have carpet. We're gonna have like always carpet room with torches. That's basically what I'm saying. Like downstairs, for example, there is a room with two torches. And funny enough, they're both on the on the right side of the wall, so it looks kind of like the room is sideways, kind of like maybe there's some kind of altar there on the, on the wall. So we see uh, usually all of the carpet rooms have torches, and sometimes there's just one torch in that room, and that's fine. <laughs> Such a huge room and just one door. It's so funny. Yeah. Maybe the the chances for torch should be a bit higher. I'm not sure. Yeah, this was a good this was a good carpet torch room. So yeah. That's that's it. There is a bit of a chance here. We have to monitor this. I think there might be a chance if there was not not a door placed. And yeah, so if there is no door that has been placed there, so there's an empty space instead, and and that empty space is exactly the, where the torch would go. It won't recognize it, and will will place a torch free floating. Uh, we're gonna have to monitor the situation. It's kind of like a rare occurrence, but if it happens, uh, we might have to do like a special check here inside the M get uh, M set here, and kind of like see if the tile. Rec right, right to the uh, left to the left side torch is walkable. If it's walkable, we're not placing the torch. And uh, if the tile right to the right side torch is walkable, we're also, also not going to place the torch. Details. Details. All right. So this is going to be it for this episode. On the next episode, I want you uh, to go with you guys over two more decoration functions. And then we're gonna start thinking about adding even more content to our game, like thinking about how we can add more monsters, more items, kind of like start building up this critical mass to start playtesting the game to see if uh, oh no, all, our, all of the seeds that we have sown uh, about our gameplay actually bear any fruit. For now, thank you so much for joining me. The code uh, for this episode will be always downstairs. And thank you so much, um, uh, OMGMog, for maintaining the GitHub repository. I really appreciate it. And there's gonna be t-shirts in the store. There's also a store downstairs. It, today I'm wearing like this Lego t-shirt because I love it so much. But um, that's not the kind of t-shirt that you can get in the store, but there's also really excellent t-shirts in the store. And you should always join our Discord channel because the wonderful people from the community are hanging out there and have way better ideas than I have. All right, guys, see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.